Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, from the Fall Ages, Hollywood Shano here, about to give you another Injustice Gods Among Us video. And this video, we finally promote Killer Frost up to level 50 Elite 7, and this is one of my favorite cards in the game because of her passive ability, which actually dampens the opponent's power generation by 50%, and passive ability is best served cold, which does exactly that, and the significance of the Power dampening is really strong because if you can't get off special, that is a lot of damage mitigation. It's one of the best abilities in Survivor. It's also really strong in multiplayer. In single player, it can also be really powerful too because it does allow Rasha Ghoul Scimitar to work a lot better. And if you have two or three hit combo enders, hint, hint, Killer Frost does have that. It can be a really powerful tool. So, this is, in my opinion, the second best pass in the game next to Red Sun, Green Lantern, bring it immunity to crit and sun. So as you can see, Killer Frost, 6,655 damage, 17,496 health. Cold as ice, 1,330 to 2,661. The black ice, 3,992 to 7,985. And the endless whiteout, 9,982 damage. So promoting up to Elite 1, damage goes from 6,655 to 9,983. Health goes from 17,496 to 26,244. So the coldest ice at Elite 1, 1,996 to 3,993. Black ice, 5,989 to 11,979. And the endless whiteout, 14,974 damage. So promoting up to Elite 2, damage goes from 9,983 to 13,311. Health goes from 26,244 to 34,992. So at Elite 2, cold as ice 2,662 to 5,324. Black ice 7,986 to 15,973. And the endless whiteout 19,966 damage. So promoting up to Elite 3, damage goes from 13,311 to 19,967. Health goes from 34,992 to 52,488, which is the biggest jump from Elite 2 to Elite 3. Cold as ice, 3,993 to 7,986. The black ice, 11,980 to 23,960. And the endless whiteout, 29,950 damage. So promoting up to Elite 4, damage goes from 19,967 to 23,294. Health goes from 52,488 to 62,986. So cold as ice, 4,658 to 9,317. Black ice, 13,976 to 27,952. And the endless whiteout, 34,941 damage. So promoting to Elite 5, damage goes from 23,294 to 26,622. Health goes from 62,986 to 69,984. So cold as ice at Elite 5, 5,324 to 10,648. Black ice, 15,973 to 31,946. And the endless whiteout, 39,933 damage. So promoting up to Elite 6, damage goes from 26,622 to 29,950. Health goes from 69,984 to 78,732. So cold as ice, 5,990 to 11,980. Black ice, 17,970 to 35,940. And the endless whiteout, 44,925 damage. So, promoting to Elite 7 is 231,000 credits, which is really cheap for such a good card. Damage goes from 29,950 to 33,277. Health goes from 78,732 to 87,480, which is about Red Sun Green Lantern quality at, I believe, 1,250 base. The cold as ice at Elite 7, 6,655 to 13,310. Black ice, 19,966 to 39,932. And the endless whiteout, 49,915 damage. So now we're going to take a look at our collection and see where Killer Frost ranks among all of her peers. So we're going to sort by damage, not by silver first. So as you can see, not even on the first page of cards. And I don't think it actually rolled over because you are above Black Adam, of course. So we're probably going to have to go into a battle and take a look at it. So now we're going to sort by damage. And you can see Killer Frost all the way in the back, right where Doomsday is at 850 damage 
and about 1,250 health. Does have a little bit more health than Killer than Red Sun Green Lantern, who does have 1,200 base, but you can see not really high in the damage department and a little bit weaker than Raven, but Raven does have significantly less health. So now we're going to promote the stats for Killer Frost for her Killer special. Frost. So many cold is like 6,655 to 13,310. At rank 2, 7,320 to 14,641. At rank 3, 7,986 to 15,972. Rank 4, 8,652 to 17,304. At rank 5, 9,317 to 18,635. At rank 6, 9,650 to 19,300. At rank 7, 9,983 to 19,966. At rank 8, 10,315 to 20,631. At rank 9, 10,648 to 21,297. And fully promoted 10,981 to 21,962. So the Black Ice 19,966 to 39,932. At rank 2, 21,962 to 43,925. And the cool thing about Black Ice, it is partially unblocked. What? Rank 3, 23,959 to 47,918. 25,956 to 51,912. At rank 5, 27,952 to 55,905. Rank 6, 28,950 to 57,901. At rank 7, 29,949 to 59,898. At rank 8, 30,947 to 61,895. Rank 9, 31,945 to 63,891. And fully upgraded 32,944 to 65,888. And Black Ice is really cool because part of the attack is unblockable. So the Endless Whiteout, 49,915 damage. At rank 2, 54,907. At rank 3, 59,898. At rank 4, 64,890. At rank 5, 69,881. At rank 6, 72,377. At rank 7, 74,873. At rank 8, 77,369. At rank 9, 79,864. And fully upgraded 82,360 damage. So the way we're going to show off Killer Frost is we're going to be doing five battles in multiplayer and then we're going to do one full clear of Survivor. And this will show off both aspects of Killer Frost in multiplayer as well as Survivor mode as Killer Frost is really good in both scenarios. Mostly because of the power dampening, but having partial unblockable on the Black Ice can be good as kind of a fill-in card. Now the team we're going to be using for this specifically is Red Sun Wonder Woman, Red Sun Green Lantern, and... Killer Frost, and the reason for that is I hate getting stunned on Tagen, and by having Red Sun Green Lantern, you don't have that option, but you can still show off Killer Frost by using the same gear that we use on Wonder Woman, which is the fourth world set, and Red Sun Green Lantern, we will be using the two-piece LexCorp along with the Ibis Stick for more burn damage. Green Lantern, Killer Frost. And for Killer Frost, we're going to be using the same setup we use for Raven, Rosh Ghul Scimitar. We're also going to be using the Gauntlets of Azrael along with the Blade of the War God. So basically, Killer Frost can come in, do her Killer combo Frost. ender, and also partially heal the team a little bit. So this is the team that we're going to use. It's basically the same setup, except normally Red Sun Superman would have the Ibis Stick, League of Assassin, the Depth Knife, and the Knife Collection, but Red Sun Green Lantern has a crappy special one. So we're logging into multiplayer right now. We're going to be doing a five battle matchup followed by a full run of Survivor. In the first matchup, we have Ajax going up against an animated Batman Beyond, Arkham Origins Batman, and Regime Aquaman. Very low gear score, should not have a problem with this fight. Begin. So we're going to use Killer Frost to start off. You see a decent amount of healing, 87-84 from the Gauntlets of Azure. We're going to use the Black Ice to soften up Arkham Origins Batman significantly, and also that way we can tag in and not take damage from Batman. We're going to use a Shield Toss. That is enough to get rid of him, so we can't even get off a special, too. So Aquaman is it. 
Now it's really important in multiplayer to decide when to go to two bars and when to go to three. Obviously, if you're dealing with an Injustice 2 Superman or a Dawn Adjusted Batman, sometimes it's better to just get to three bars rather than use a special. Here we're going to use the Guardian to try to get rid of Aquaman, and we do so. One hit will hit on animated Batman Beyond. And he will burn up for most of his health. We're going to go off the Coldest Ice. That should do an animated Batman Beyond for the victory in the first fight. And we win one battle without suffering a knockout very easy in the, with this team. Looks like we can do all of the quests as long as we win two consecutive matchups offline. 10,980 XP. 4,500 battle points. 3,810 credits. So in the second battle, we have Mr. Woody using a Raven, Blackest Night, Martian Manhunter, and a Doomsday. Raven is geared offensively. Martian Manhunter has three-piece fourth world, and Doomsday pretty much has offensive with the Ibis stick. So probably a really good team when you're using him, but on defense, not so much. Martian Manhunter is a pain in the ass, but keep in mind, one of the weaknesses that Raven has is that she is very vulnerable to being unblocked during a combo ender. What I mean by that is when Raven does any of her attacks on the third hit, you could throw a shield toss pretty much right away and it cannot be blocked. And it's really good to red zone Superman with a flying punch. With Injustice 2 Superman, you can't do that. You basically have to use single hit moves and Wonder Woman is really good for that. So we're going to get in Killer Frost. We're going to go off the Black Ice on Doomsday. So that is going to put him at two bars. That almost wipes him out. So he does get off an Earth Shake, does some pretty good damage to Killer Frost, but doesn't knock her out. So Raven is back in, putting off the Shield Toss, unblock, gets rid of her, and now we just have Martian Manhunter deal with by himself. So we're going to wait until the Life Drain phase. There it is, 58,000 damage crit. We're going to use the Turbine Smash, and the reason we're going to be using that is for the Burn. So we're going to use another one. We're going to try to get in Killer Frost afterwards and Power Drain. You know how this ends. So we're going to get off the Coldest Ice. Hopefully that does trigger the Resurrection before he can heal. There's the Phase Assault, and that's probably going to be the last special he's ever going to get off. Now because of the burn damage, the Fourth World doesn't heal quite as much. Now in the Reduced Damage Phase, he does also not get Power Drain as badly, as any damage mitigation also reduces what you get Power Drain, so that's why when you block... If you have a lot of blocking gear, you really don't get power drain. If you get deflected attacks from that, it's not going to power drain at all. Here we're going to go off the black ice because Wonder Woman is at two bars, as is Green Lantern. And it doesn't matter what we do, we're going to go off the By the Gods Martian Manhunter Massacred for the victory in the second fight. 12,480 XP. 5,000 battle points, 900 credits. So in the third battle, we have Raging Suba with a Suicide Squad team that has offensive gear on Deadshot. Harley Quinn kind of has weaker gear along with an Ancient Katana. And Suicide Squad, the Joker, has the Enchantress gear with two basic damage items. Now, I really don't like gearing the Joker for basic damage because he is a slower attacker. I've liked gearing him up with special damage, especially if you can get off a bunch of bangs that give you a bar and a half of power. You can definitely get some value. We're going to have the Black Ice right away on Deadshot. The reason Deadshot is the most important Suicide Squad member is because he is the one that causes the unblockable special moves, and that can be really deadly, even though we have Killer Frost on our team, so the opponent shouldn't be able to get off a special. We're going to use the Coldest Ice right there in order to stop power generation, also to slow Harley Quinn down. So Joker comes in, we're going to do the same thing, Coldest Ice, just to slow him down. Off another Coldest Ice. That's going to keep the Joker slow. You can see, not quite as offensive as Raven, but still gets the job done quite as well. Harley Quinn gets Power Drain. And there you see the Gauntlets of Asgore doing work. Here we're going to have the Black Eyes get rid of Harley Quinn. That is going to do some damage on the Joker as well. And basically knocks him out for the victory in the third fight. Face it, you're done. So there's seven characters, 3,200 battle points, 3,000 credits for that. 12,480 XP. 5,000 battle points, 3,900 credits. 
So in the fourth battle, we have Mardak going up against Injustice 2 Superman, Suicide Squad, Deadshot, and Metahuman the Flash. Suicide Squad, Deadshot has the standard power drain and heal gear. Injustice 2 Superman has three-piece fourth world. So more than likely, we're going to be dealing with Injustice 2 Superman last. Now we're going to build up our bar on, her, on, kill, on Red Sun Wonder Woman a little bit. Killer Frost comes in. And mostly we just have Killer Frost in there to dampen the power of Injustice 2 Superman. So there is Deadshot. We're going to have to cold as ice and slow him down. He is on a bar and a half because of Rasha Will Scimitar. Target Acquired does do a little bit of damage. And we're going to power drain him down so he can't do another special. And there's the Rasha Will Scimitar coming into play. Power draining, putting her under two bars. So we're going to have the Black Ice on Deadshot and try to get rid of him. It's really weird seeing this used on my side when I'm used to using it against the opponent. So Metahuman the Flash is in. Wonder Woman in at two bars. We're going to go off the Shield Toss. Hits for like 75% of his health. And Metahuman the Flash pretty much gone there. So there's Injustice 2 Superman. Flying Punch Block. Now at this point it's probably okay to damage him because Deadshot really has nothing left. So we're going to go off the Shield Toss on Superman just to get rid of the Kryptonian Fortitude. We're going to go off the Shield Toss on Deadshot, defends it, but we're going to bash him out. And now we're going to try to pop the shield with Wonder Woman before we get Green Lantern, who is at three bars. So we're going to wait for the Flying Punch because we want him not to be able to do a special. So we got the Black Ice on Injustice 2 Superman. It's for about 50,000. We're going to go off some Turbine Smashes. Green Lantern did get to three bars. But the whole purpose of this is we're going to burn him down. You can see the burn damage, and you want to kind of swap in Killer Frost. That way he doesn't get off a bar, because the main source of healing obviously is from the fourth world. So if you power drain him down with Killer Frost, it's extremely easy to do, even if he takes some hits. So Green Lantern with the Turbine Smash again. This is a really nasty combo here. It's a team that can't work better than Red Sun Superman, even though Red Sun Superman is more offensive. By dampening the opponent's power, it's going to be a lot harder for them to get off specials, and that is a big deal. So there's the Resurrection. We're going to get off another Turbine Smash and just keep burning Injustice 2 Superman. We're going to get off another Turbine Smash. There's the coldest ice, and down goes Injustice 2 Superman for the victory. So you can see that by dampening the power, it really controls 4th World really well. 12,480 XP, 5,000 battle points, 900 credits. So in the 5th battle, we have David Flash going up against Injustice 2 Superman, 600 Wonder Woman, and Teen Super Titans Raven. So... Injustice 2 Superman has the Mother Box, League of Assassins, the Death Knights, and the Netherrealm combo. 600 Wonder Woman has two peaks, Lev Corp, and the Ibis Stick. Pretty good combo. Raven. Teen Titans Raven has three piece Fourth World. And that is really significant because Teen Titans Raven can do a lot of damage with her passive. So by keeping her in the fight, you really just have to use that. And I think that's a good way to use Teen Titans Raven. But keep in mind, you need power to do that. So Injustice 2 Superman is going to be a pain in the ass because of that Kryptonian Fortitude. Even though he doesn't have defensive gear, it's still hard to deal with. So there's the power drain under one bar. 600 Wonder Woman is in. We're going to go off the black ice on her. We're going to tag in Green Lantern for some burn damage. Ship toss blocked for 3583. So we didn't see the stun on Tag, and we're not used to that. We're just going to go off the Shield Toss and get rid of it. So there's the Flying Punch. And with the League of Assassin's and Death Knives, that does do a little bit of damage. Here we're going to get rid of the Shield. So we're going to pop him again. So Red Sun Wonder Woman cannot be crit because of Red Sun Green Lantern, whereas Killer Frost can. So there is Teen Titans Raven at two bars. Dark Half does get blocked. You are a fool. And luckily no passive there, so I highly doubt that 
Raven's gonna get off any more specials. We're gonna go off the Black Ice and soften her up. Now we still have Injustice 2 Superman to deal with. And that is gonna be pretty annoying. So Wonder Woman comes back in. We're gonna shield toss Raven. Unfortunately blocks it. So we're gonna take a flying punch. That does do a little bit of area damage. We're gonna go off the shield toss on Injustice 2 Superman. It is blocked, so we're gonna go off the Turbine Smash. Get rid of the Kryptonian Fortitude. And we're gonna try to heal up Red Sun Green Lantern. So we're gonna go off the Guardian. That is not blocked, so we're gonna get a nice heal on Red Sun Green Lantern for about 30,000. So we're gonna try to power drain. It's a little bit gutsy here, but we did get Teen Titans Raven under one bar. We're gonna use the Cold as Ice just so we can slow her down. So there's the resurrection. We're going to have another Cold as Ice. Teen Titans Raven not quite at one bar. And we're going to have to shield toss. That is enough to deal with Teen Titans Raven for the victory in the fifth fight. 12,480 XP. 14,800 battle points. 2,664 credits. All right, so now that you saw the usefulness of Killer Frost at level 50 Elite 7, let's show her where she really shines in Survivor mode. So the team that we're going to use is a little bit different than usual. We're going to use Arkham Knight Batman. We are going to use Killer Frost, but instead of Raven, we are going to go with Injustice 2 Superman, which can be really powerful defensively as well. So for Arkham Knight Batman in early rounds, I like to use the two-piece Lex Corp and the Enchantress Companion Superman. card. For Injustice 2 Superman, we're just going to go for raw damage. We can't use Rashaville Scimitar because Killer Frost needs it, but we're going to use the Blade of War God Knife Collection Killer Promethium Frost. Longsword, and we have to go find another damage gear item for Killer Frost, which will probably be the Nether Realm combo. Killer Frost. Killer Frost personal gear item can work really well, but then you really can't use the Gauntlets of Azrael. But it would enhance her special too. And you'd also get healing from that as well. So we're going to start off Survivor with double credits. Now our usual goal is Fight 11 if we can get beyond that cool. Obviously you want Raven when you get past Fight 11 because Hulk manipulating is really powerful. We got the Arkham Assault Obliterate Deathstroke. Arkham Origins Deathstroke is it. It's going to take a lot of skull damage. Killer Frost working away to two bars. The death Stroke is gone. And there's the Black Ice on Injustice 2 Aquaman. That is enough to get rid of him for the victory in the first fight. 8,138 XP. 2,400 credits. So we're going to spin the wheel again. Let's see what we actually get from it. It looks like double credits, but it actually swings in our favor and we get a last laugh ticket. Begin. So we're up against Lobo, Animated Harley Quinn, and Insurgency Joker. There's the Arkham Assault right away, which is really powerful. Even in later ways, because being able to have a lot of damage on the first guy is really strong. Because you don't have to health swap the first guy, and if you can do a lot of damage to him, then you don't even need to worry about who you're going to do damage to before swapping. There's the Black Ice. And there is Injustice 2 Superman pounding for 10,000 damage unaugmented for the victory in the second fight. 8,164 XP. And I really can't wait to see Injustice 2 Superman fully augmented, but I have been working on Arkham Knight Batman. There is our second ticket. So we're going to spin the wheel again in fight three. And we are going to get some green shards. I am perfectly fine with that. So we have Earth 2 Solomon Grundy. In fight three, he's not that bad, but in fights 11 and beyond, he can be a major pain in the ass. Arkham Assault on Earth 2 Salmon Grundy will take him out right away and will heal all of the damage back. So Dawn of Justice Batman takes some skulls. Try again. There's the Cold as Ice that gets evaded. We're going to tag out just so we avoid that. So there's Injustice 2 Superman. He's going to pound down 
Batman, so... Red Sun Batman would normally be close to a bar at this point, but because of Killer Frost, that power dampening is really strong. There's the double special moves. And Red Sun Batman pretty much wiped out. Red Sun Batman eliminated for the victory in the third fight. 8,190 XP. And there's our three green shards, 1,440 credits. Putting us at 5,160. So now we're in fight four. It looks like we're going to get some red shards. Yes, we are. I'm very happy that we don't get some XP. As we really don't need it. It's so easy to level guys up. When you can do bonus battle six for 30-something thousand and bonus battle seven for about 27. Here we're going to go the Arkham Assault on Silver Wonder Woman. Get rid of her right away. Suicide Squad the Joker is going to take a bunch of skulls, even though the bomb stops Killer Frost from comboing. Now, the one interesting thing about Enchanted Gear is that when you use it, it can be really powerful. When the opponent uses it, you better be in defensive mode, or that could set up for some unblockable, annoying combos. So there's the Black Ice to get rid of Suicide Squad the Joker. There's Injustice 2 Superman. That final hit broke the Kryptonian Fortitude, so... One of the cool things about Injustice Gods Among Us are the combo abilities in the game. I really hope that Injustice 2 actually has that. And I really hope they don't follow suit with WWE Immortals and Mortal Kombat where if you overkill an enemy, the extra hits can still hit opponents. 8,216 XP. I think that's the best thing about Injustice is that it pulls off some really fun combos. It just makes gameplay much more entertaining than Mortal Kombat X and using the Slasher, Jason, Cold War, Sonya, Blade, uh, bullshit teams. So we're in fight five. It looks to be double credits. Yes, it is. So the heal suppression begins at wave five. It's only 10%, so you really don't notice it. It's like wave... 9 or 10, you start noticing it when it's like 50%. Arkham Assault gets blocked. Still hits for about 47,000. The skulls are going to do some damage to Blackest Knight Batman, but not get rid of him. However, the burn damage from the Lexcorp helmet definitely helps there. So there is New 52 Nightwing. We're going to get the Black Ice on him. And even though he's blocking, it's still going to do some work on the last couple of hits. It used to be one of the most powerful moves in Survivor in multiplayer. Back in the day, a lot of people used Shazam because of a high health pool. And a lot of people used Arkham Origins Batman because you could start the fight at two bars. Now, back in the day, they really didn't have stun on tagging gear, so you could pretty much use anybody. But I still like using Red Sun Green Lantern because the worst feeling is when you get stunned on Tagan and obliterate. Look off the Black Ice on Wonder Woman. That should be enough to get rid of him. New 52 Nightwing in at one bar. And that power drain doesn't do anything. We're going to have to stay down. Nightwing should be eliminated for the victory in the fifth fight. Now, Injustice 2 Superman is a really powerful card because you can avoid the stun on Tagging because the Kryptonian Fortitude will basically just waste the opponent's power. And Dawn of Justice Batman can evade anything as long as he's not stunned. So we're already at 10,080 creds. We got our third ticket in fight five. So we're guaranteed at least five tickets. Looks like this time we are going to land on double credit, so that's good. Augments are like the worst thing possible. I really wish they'd put minor damage, attack, crit chance, crit damage on there. So we missed the battering, but we're not going to be using it. There is the Arkham Assault. Down goes Metahuman the Flash. Chantra's gear does about 40,000 damage to Regime Aquaman. Actually, I think that was Prime Aquaman, so... Justice League Wonder Woman is it. We're going to have to Black Ice and soften her up to Nifty. Okay. Justice 2 Superman back in. Wonder Woman is eliminated. Flying Punch on Aquaman does about 40,000 damage. The good thing about Injustice 2 Superman is that when you're using Killer Frost, which is pretty much good on any team, you can take specials. Like, Killer Frost is less important when you have Injustice 2 Superman because of the special mitigation. You can kind of use him to manipulate that. So we're at 13,680 credits in Fight 6. And we're going to get double credits again.
So in fight seven, we can't use the Arkham Assault, we can't use the Black Ice. But we still can use special ones. And obviously if you have the Ibis Stick, that's really good because that'll cause more burn damage. However, the Enchanter's Gear does cause a little bit of extra damage as well. I still think the Ibis Stick is better than the Enchanter's Gear, but the Enchanter's Gear can cause some funny moments. We probably shouldn't have used the Batarang because of Raven. In Fight 7, when you have to deal with Raven, you usually want to knock her out with a super move, but a high damage special one can do the trick, but we're not using Red Sun Superman, so that is not an option. So there is the... There, Ultimate Liftoff does absolutely nothing. Metahuman the Flash is in. Bring off the Flying Punch. So we're going to block. That's going to do about 20,000 damage. The Raven comes back in. So we're going to start wearing her down. Bring off the Flying Punch because her health is still pretty hot. We probably have her in super move range. We're going to block on Batman because he has so much blocking here. So we're going to soften him up with Batman. Killer Frost did get eliminated from the Super Mario. That's the best way to deal with Killer Frost. It's also the best way to deal with Fourth World if the opponent is blocking quite a bit because sometimes getting your attack blocked is worse. Skull's doing some damage mid-special as Metahuman and the Flash gets dominated for the victory in the 7th fight. 8,294 XP. And we get 3,840 credits for that fight. So we're in fight 8. Three tickets already. And we're going to get some green shards. The one we're actually lowest on is blue shards. Begin. It's funny because for the longest time I had the most blue shards, but most of the four-star gear takes blue and red shards, I believe, or blue and green or something like that. Down goes Luchador Bank, courtesy of the Skulls. So Dark Side is it. We're going to have to fly and punch on him. Take, keep in mind there is 1% radiation. And this is where Raven is also good to soak up damage. And also, because of the Gauntlets of Azra, you can help manipulate your health swaps. So there's the Flying Punch. Dark Side is gone. Silver Green Lantern is in. We're going to have the Explosive Battering and start burning down Green Lantern. Chance's Gear is slowly healing Arkham Knight Batman 2. We're going to have the Black Ice. That does some good damage. Turbine Smash does absolutely nothing because of Injustice 2 Superman, so... Between Raven, Killer Frost, and Injustice 2 Superman, you have three deadly characters, but Arkham Knight Batman is a really good start. 8,320 XP. So now we're in Fight 9 with four tickets, almost 20,000 credits. It looks like we are going to get some blue shards this fight. I'm very happy with that. Anything but major XP is really welcome. So in this fight, we have the Arkham team. Now, normally we do have Raven to help help manipulate, and then we can use super moves to get rid of people. Obviously, the biggest threat in this fight is Bane, because he can actually heal on special 1, whereas Harley Quinn can do it on special 2. So we're going to use Injustice 2 Superman and try to pound out Hartley Quinn as quickly as possible. So there is Arkham Origins the Joker, not quite at one bar. We're going to use the power drains to slow down the Joker. And fight 9 is also where 4th World stops working. It used to be fight 10 that 4th World stopped working, but they changed that. So Bane is at one bar. So I'm going to take that race slam. does absolutely nothing. You see the heal for 35,000. Batman is at three bars just about. There is Harley Quinn. The pop pop gets blocked. We're going to go off the Dark Knight. Harley Quinn should be eliminated. 
Now it's really good saving Bane for last because he is the one you want to isolate and power drip. Especially if you don't have Raven on your team. There is Bane again. So we're going to get in Killer Frost. And we're at three bars. Now the tricky thing here is that if he gets under half health, he's going to be able to get off Avenger. But we're going to go the Endless Whiteout and stab Bane's balls. One of the coolest looking super moves ever, in my opinion. So we got the Kryptonian Smash, and the Joker is going to be in big trouble. The Joker is gone. Raid Slam, I don't know why we blocked that. We had Kryptonian Fortitude. That was really stupid on my part. Took off the flying punch, switch over to Arkham Knight Batman, but Superman gets the job done for the victory in the ninth fight. 8,346 XP. And we get three blue shards, 2,160 credits. So at fight 10, this is where I like to start swapping my gear. We healed everybody up. Batman. So instead of the Enchanter's gear, I like to use the Soul Taker Batman. sword to try to get a bigger heal on special two. Or Killer Frost, the Gauntlets of Azrael kind of suck now. So what we're going to do is put a piece of blocking gear. Fourth World Helmet is a really good one. And we might as well just put the plate on for more health and also a resurrect mechanic. And in Justice 2 Superman, we have straight damage gear. I don't think we need to do anything with him. Looks like we are going to make a change, though. So we're going to put on the Kryptonian Battlesuit just to give him a way to heal on special, too. And we are going to get another ticket, so that will put us at five. Begin. Now, the advantage of the Soul Taker Sword is that you have a 50% chance to heal half of the damage done. And once you're in higher waves, the heal suppression is really powerful, so having that extra healing is really good. So there's the Black Ice on Red Sun Destro. That's not going to wipe him up, but that's going to do significant damage. The Arkham Knight Batman is back in. Balls of Steel Superman is in. Almost at one bar. Now keep in mind we do have Injustice 2 Superman to mitigate. So that Flying Punch does nothing. We're going to go off a Flying Punch of our own. So you see the healing is down about 50% at Fight 10. Harley Quinn is in. We're going to go off an Arkham Assault and try to heal Arkham Knight Batman up further. Yes, we do. That's a nice heal. 36,000. The Hammer Slam is going to do about 8,000. So we're going to have to stay down on Harley Quinn. It gets blocked. Sword Spin does absolutely nothing because of Kryptonian Fortitude. So we're going to have the Black Ice on Deathstroke. Will this be enough to get rid of him? No, it is not, but it does a lot of damage. So we get in Superman so we don't have to worry about Power Drain. Because we weren't sure if it was that one bar. We're going to have the Flying Punch get rid of Deathstroke. That way the next person to come in can't do a special for any damage. So Harley Quinn is at one bar. There's the Hammer Slam. Superman taking it like a champ. We're going to get in Arkham Knight Batman. That way we can get the two bars and put some pressure on Superman. There's the Arkham Assault. Hits for about 122,000. There's the first flying punch that prop. That flying punch is going to do nothing. Now we're going to stay down. Balls of Steel Superman eliminate for the victory in the top five. Eight thousand three hundred seventy-two XP, and we healed up these guys pretty nicely. Two thousand two hundred eighty credits, and now we are at five tickets in our eleventh fight. Twin is kind of a doozy without Raven, but we do have three swaps available, including Raven. So we get trolled here by getting an augmentation card on our final fight. Begin. We're going to off the Arkham Assault right away on Justice League Wonder Woman. 
Killer Frost comes in. There's 600 Wonder Woman. We're going to power drain her down too. John Stewart Green Lantern is a really annoying card to deal with because at under 20% health, all three teammates can get an emergency barrier. The only way around that really is using super moves. But at this stage in the game, can you even do that? Here we're getting up to two bars for 600 Wonder Woman. That way we can heal Injustice 2 Superman for about 12,000. Heal suppression is up to about 60%. That would have got for an Arkham Assault, which gets blocked. Still hits for about 47,000. Still heals for about 13. Killer Frost is going to get off the black ice. And this is where her gear item can work really well, but we still want the... So there's the first barrier. John Stewart Green Lantern does have a bar. Turbine Smash is going to do nothing. He's not quite at a bar. We're going to try to power drain John Stewart Green Lantern. Killer Frost is at two bars, so we can get off another Black Ice. And Superman is going to absorb the egg as Rat does absolutely nothing. You can't stab his balls. So here we're going to go off a stay down. Will this trigger the second emergency barrier? Yes, it does. We're going to get Arkham Knight Batman, and one thing to keep in mind, even while the barrier is up, you can still use your specials. So we're going to go off the Arkham Assault, get rid of 600 Wonder Woman. Turbine Smash gets blocked for about 11,000, so there is Jon Stewart Green Lantern burning away decently, even with just Lexcorp. So Justice 2 Superman takes a couple hits there. We're going to go off another stay down. Will this trigger the final emergency barrier? Yes, it does. I mean, it's not used the special, but there's the goddess blessing does absolutely nothing. Killer Frost back at two bars again. There's the black ice. Fort World Helmet definitely helping the power generation. Down goes Wonder Woman. Green Lantern. We do not get a power drain, but... Turbine Smash gets absorbed. We got the flying punch. A whole advantage for that is that we can try to get an Arkham Knight Batman to get off the explosive battering and hopefully get rid of him. Yes, we do for the victory in the eleventh fight. Eight thousand three hundred ninety-eight XP. Now, normally we could keep going and we'd probably hit fight thirteen, no problem, but. I think you've seen enough for this. We have six tickets all together. We're going to cash out, and you guys can watch me hit the wheel and see what we get. Now, because we have all of the gear, we're going to try to farm for Augments. And we start off with a Strange Elixir. So on our second ticket, we get Major Damage. That's a really good one. Our third Augment is a minor crit chance, so Red Sun Wonder Woman will finally hit 50% crit. And the Diablo Companion card. For some reason, even though it's supposed to be 4th World, we're getting Suicide Squad gear. So we get a major crit chance augment. That's 5% crit. Really good. And we also get minor health. So overall, this Survivor run for 6 tickets was amazing. So first thing we're going to do is augment Red Sun Wonder Woman. And we're going to max out her crit chance. Minor crit is all we need at 1%, which is why we waited so long to do it. So Red Sun Superman is fully maxed out, and now we are still working on Arkham Knight Batman. It is currently at 198% crit damage and 11% crit chance, and now he'll be at 16. Gains about 150 dam health, along with a little over 300 damage. So if you like this video on Killer Frost level 50 Elite 7, as well as showing off a 5 battle matchup in multiplayer as well as 11 fights in survivors and 6 tickets. Please give this video a like rating, comment, subscribe, share this video amongst your friends and as a favorite. Check out my other Injustice Gods Among Us videos playlist, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch, which are all Hollywood show. And have a wonderful day, kids. www.youtube.com slash Hollywood show now. Subscribe, bitches!